Let's see how we got this one covered again. Thank you so much. Alright, so once again, uh, my character name is Lyra Seren, and I teach with the university for so we're right here now. Uh, manager of the events department, and uh, right now making sure that people are happily shooting each other. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we cover a lot of uh, a lot of interests and activities in the events department. So today we're I'm focusing on some uh, PBE classes, and also have a special announcement so towards the end of the class uh, for people who especially have an interest in epic arts. All right, so this is uh, fairly near and dear. Uh, to my heart, so I tend to quite enjoy shooting red crosses and uh, doing a lot of mission activities. Uh, I like to earn as much as I can, um, for, you know, relatively uh, solo uh, activity. Uh, I tend to do missioning primarily on my alts. Uh, when we're not at war in the Uni, I, I do do uh, a fair bit on my main uh, rear as well. Um, but of course, uh, as the previous class talked about, there are a lot of considerations for when you are uh, doing missioning uh, while under war deck. Uh, and one of those many considerations is being able to do missions in fleets. And uh, class we have today is game missioning 101. And the nice thing about this is that it carries across a lot of different methods uh, if you're doing PvE activities um, and potentially PvP-related activities as well, uh, because the concern is always you know, really get jumped um, if you are missioning in low sec or low sec or wormhole space. Uh, if you're doing camera activities there, very good chance someone will want to want to find you and, and uh, try to track you down and pick a fight. Uh, so knowing uh, sort of the gang, the, the group act, the group ways to do uh, missioning in a fleet uh, is just uh, a knowledge and a skill that translates across many activities. Need. So that's what we'll be talking about right away. So the main topics we have today are types of mission gangs, uh, the kinds of fittings you want. Uh, when you're missioning in a fleet, uh, different ship types and their uses, uh, knowing your own group's weaknesses, uh, and what I just call need or greed, uh, what to do with the actual loot and the rewards that you get. So we are going to keep this class uh, fairly close to time. Uh, also, immediately following this class, we have a couple options. Uh, one is uh, at uh, 2000, I believe. Uh, Fargo is going to be hosting an intro to NSC. Uh, so if you're interested in uh, checking out the NLSEC campus, uh, you feel free to stay in lecture chat. We'll probably pick a uh, classroom on the private server. I'll need to check that, but uh, basically they'll be doing announcements for that, so feel free to transition over to that anytime you like. And... Uh, Let's see. If you're interested in doing some uh, group missioning afterwards, uh, feel free to just put an X up in lecture.e-uni uh, right now or any time during the class. And uh, towards the end, we'll separate into a separate room. Uh, we'll form up a fleet, and then we'll decide where we actually want to uh, want to go and do things. And also, as an option for that, if you do have an alt that you prefer to mission on, you can complete your complete welcome to switch to that alt. Uh, I may or may not do it on my main. I haven't decided yet. It depends where we actually do it with. And uh, the level of missions we do, because I can pull different corps at different levels of missions. Uh, so if you'd like to do some uh, Sisters or Caldari, uh, Caldari uh, faction with me, I can bring out my Rattlesnake for that. And Calric, uh, absolutely no concern if the bigger ship's like a battle cruiser. If we do a Locust fleet uh, into an L4, a battle cruiser should be just fine. Um, also, we could do a spider fleet instead. So now that I've dropped both of those turns, uh, let's talk about what they actually are. All right, just answer some questions in the chat there. All right, so basic definition of uh, spider fleet is that uh, a group of up to ten, uh, we'll talk about why it's ten in a second, uh, a group of up to ten players can all pull missions individually and complete them individually and share those standings. So it's called a spider because every person in the fleet spiders out and does their own thing. Um, game mechanics dictate that only a fleet of up to 10 can share the rewards. If it's larger than 10, uh, it won't be split quite the same way. I think it then splits based on squad. I haven't actually tested that. Trash shame is for details. But um, what that means is that even though the rewards are being split, um, and by rewards we're talking about uh, on-grid bounties, we're talking about uh, agent LP and ISK rewards, even though those are split uh, up to 10 ways uh, evenly, um, 
what that means is that more missions are still getting completed per hour. So in the same amount of time, you can still gain more, potentially, um, if you're all doing the same level of mission, because you'll all be pulling different kinds of missions with different rewards. So overall, it is uh, an advantageous way to be doing mission. And the contrast to that is what's called a locus fleet. And a locus fleet is everyone getting together and attacking the same mission in order to, in order to complete it. Uh, as quickly as possible. Uh, so, for example, if you're a dual boxer, if you bring in two of your characters and two battleships to attack a mission, that is essentially a very small locus fleet. Uh, you're basically dual boxing to finish faster, to manage aggro, and to be able to uh, complete the missions as quickly as possible. All right, so I'm going to be uh, prompting for questions every so often. So any questions uh, regarding spidering versus locus fleets? Okay, I'm going to assume no questions. Uh, feel free to ask them at any time during the class. Uh, all right, so we're going to talk about uh, types of mission games. So, again, you know, a lot of people think of EVE, especially starting out, as a fairly solo activity. Um, but, you know, just like any other MMO, it's possible to pick roles and you know, start to start to do missions uh, fairly effectively in a group. Uh, so if you are doing a small gang mission, uh, we'll be focusing mainly on the concept of Lotus Fleets uh, for the rest of the class here. It's a matter of you know, deciding those rules. So do you have a tank? Do you have a damage dealer? Do you have a healer? Uh, do you bring a lot of support? And uh, all these are really good options for completing missions as quickly as possible, um, having as little risk as possible, and potentially uh, doing it in ships that are smaller than normal. Uh, so, for example, if you have a fleet of five people who can fly cruisers, battle cruisers, uh, maybe you can start taking on L4s uh, as a group. So that's a way to sort of speed things up, um, to reduce the amount of uh, ISP that's necessary to get into higher level missions, and also to maintain maneuverability if you're concerned, especially about, uh, for example, in normal space, like you're not flying, you know, these enormous ships uh, from a C2 to a C3. Um, you're not taking battleships in, you're taking smaller, more agile uh, ships that can, uh, that can sustain themselves and, uh, and, and survive and complete things as fast as possible. So uh, this is all very second nature to, to wormhole game discussion. Uh, another bonus to having either dual boxing or multiple characters in a fleet is uh, having dedicated salvager on field. Um, so basically having someone that's either just falling behind you or is within range of logic support and being able to do salvaging if you're if you have a dedicated Noctis or someone in a in a heavily tanked uh, a destroyer that's uh, doing salvaging while they're just right behind you in the mission pockets. Um, that's a great way for, for them to make this. Uh, there are a lot of people who are dedicated to a salvaging career. Uni, uni, they like it. They like saving up for Noctis. They like having a chance to bring it out and use it. Um, so there's a lot of good ways to sort of split up uh, roles and things and allow everybody to sort of help out and, uh, and share the rewards. Uh, but numbers matter. You know, do you have enough people uh, to be able to accomplish what you want? Do you have too many people for who wants to split the reward? Um, is the salvager able to pull uh, the missions that you want to run? Uh, because you're in a fleet, because you're potentially sharing the rewards, um, everybody also needs to be aware of what those rewards are going to be. Does everyone want the same faction standings? Uh, you need to be really sure about that, because faction standings can screw things up for people. So from a courtesy point of view, uh, you need to be absolutely sure that everyone is happy running the same missions that you are. Um, you know, and there are, there are risks to that as well, honestly. Like if someone, if there's, if you happen to fleet up with a spy in the uni, if someone wants to ruin your day, they can potentially pull a, uh, pull a mission that is, uh, from one of the, uh, uh the jump clone, uh, agents. Um, you know, it is, it is theoretically possible for someone to share a war with you that will give you standings and will force you to be kicked out of the uni or force you to grind up those standings. Um, so there are absolutely risks, uh, even in the PV situations, uh, depending on the corp that you're in. Um, and you need to be aware that you know, everyone is on the same page and everyone knows what's, what's going on. All right. So again, continuing talking about, uh, Locus uh, specifically. Uh, so we have mission gang fitting, so weapons fitting. So you want to uh, make sure that everyone is aware of the kinds of rats you'll be facing uh, when you're warping to a mission. Uh, remember that uh, unlike some other games where mission uh, mission uh, holes can actually be shared, 
Uh, that can't be done anymore. Essentially, everyone is following you, following the person who has pulled the mission onto grid. Uh, so you're warping first. Uh, everyone is landing either at a gate or in the middle of the mission pocket. Um, or you can, you can force group warp people. You can uh, squad warp someone uh, once you're in the fleet. And uh, just making sure that everyone is aware of, okay, we're going to be facing these kinds of rats. They're going to have this kind of range. They're going to have this kind of defense uh, defense hold profile. Um, and we want to fit these kinds of prisons. So essentially, one of the best things you can do is, is simply just link the Eve survival uh, page for the mission that you're doing. And because we have a bunch of those in my channel, log, there, just uh, relink the uh, level four damsel in distress. So say you wanted to have, you know, five people who were running that particular mission. Uh, you would open up uh, that uh, survival page. And then everybody could just review it and see, okay, based on the fact that we're doing this, um, okay, it's going to have these kinds of, uh, these kinds of resist profiles we need to protect against, uh, this kind of damage that is the best to deal. Um, if everyone knows that there's going to be a potential, uh, spider drone doing webbing. And, uh, be able to, you know, be able to go into it fairly well informed about what they're going to be facing. Um, another thing that is, again, especially wormhole gangs know very well is, uh, triggers. So in the previous class we talked about, why managing your triggers is so important. Um, the larger the group you're in, if you're in a locust fleet, it's 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 less of a concern because you have more people to potentially spread that aggro uh, around, and you have more people dealing damage to take care of things. But inevitably, you're going to get people who are going to be shooting the triggers because they're just shooting at the closest thing. They're shooting at whatever their guns can reach. Um, I I have a, a vantage title space cowboy. Um, I didn't I didn't get it for that reason, but I try to live up to it. Uh, in some way, in some regard. Uh, so I, I have absolutely been known to just, you know, shoot the nearest thing and uh, trigger a bunch of uh, very nasty rats uh, to come on grid and you know, not feel bad about it at all. So, you know, just, just living up to, you know, living up to a reputation that, that someone else gave to me. But uh, ideally, you, you want to at least know for sure that uh, if you're fighting, say, damsel in distress, once you shoot cruel, that's going to launch all the nasty stuff at you. So making sure that everyone knows, okay, maybe we should save this guy for last. And this is where you can decide, okay, I'm, if, if you as the squad leader, the person doing the warp ins or whatever, um, is willing to call triggers or to do tagging, um, if you have any experience with uh, the encouraging community, you'll be aware that uh, you can actually do tags in space and folk, uh, to give people an idea of what to shoot, what priority. Um, you can hotkey those kinds of things. It's, it's really quite an easy process. You can do it through the right-click menu. And uh, as long as someone's overview is set up for it, or as long as they're on grid and they can see it in space in the brackets, um, it's really a nice, easy way to say, okay, well, this is what we should shoot, and this is what we should avoid. And um, the more complicated place you get into, it, it, it's a good way to prepare for incursions, to prepare for sort of very orderly uh, focus of targets. And it's something that's a little bit different from PvP engagements, where you're basically, you have a broadcast of targets, and that's your primary uh, but in other situations like PvE, they're actually concentrating on okay, based on range, what do I look at? Um, and uh, based on how I grow is shifting, how do we deal with that? Uh, Calvary has are you E Le- Leroy Jenkins? I know we have a we have a couple of other people who are a bit more like that. I'm 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 more of a I'm more of a shoot first. Um, <laughs> shoot first ask questions later. Uh, we have more, we have more people like that, but, you know, basically I'll just, I'll just warp in, warp to zero on somebody. I, I don't want to get into it too much, but it's fun to talk about many titles and how they're Alright, uh, alright, so I'm done with, uh, looking at the damsel in distress page. Back to the syllabus here. Uh, so again, back to mission gang fittings. So, you know, what kind of, deciding what kind of range you are, what's your best role, um, again, and again, thinking about how encouraging communities are structured, um, you can actually group people into different into different squads. If you only have ten people, it's pretty easy to to sort of shuffle them around and have everybody like have a role. Like if you have two damage dealers and two logi, you can you can put them in groups, and it's quite easy to uh, for people to have a sense of what they're supposed to be doing just based on role uh, if they're familiar with the role role. Uh, how do you want to tank? Well, ideally you want to do your your, your mission specific resists. Uh, do you want to be active or passive? Again, that will depend a great deal on the kinds of ships that you have. It's easier to be an active tanked uh, ship if your weapon uses no cap, if you're shooting missiles or projectiles. 
Um, it's pretty difficult for uh, most of our ships, especially uh, battleships, to do a lot of sustained damage dealing uh, if they're also armor ripping. Um, so, do you have logic? Are they able to? Are they able to use their weapons in a different way? Do they need to fit uh, cat boosters or anything like that differently? So the fact that you have your support, just like in PvP situations, means that you can change how you fit. You're able to think about, okay, I want to deal more damage and have less tank, that kind of thing. So maybe you have a primary uh, battleship damage dealer, and he's fitted out with heat stabs, and then he has cap transfers from a couple of augurs. You know, if you have those situations, it's really nice and uh, easy to say, okay, we're gonna we're gonna bash through these out and you know, be twice as productive as we could by ourselves. So again, this is why you know, doing doing things in a group is is generally going to be more effective than doing it by yourself. But the time you the time you save in actually doing the mission may be up by the time in planning it. So you also have to enjoy the planning and the group process. All right, so ship types and their uses. So fly for your mission level. Um, so in case you're not aware, um, the general structure for missions is level one is for frigates and destroyers, level two is for cruisers. Level 3 is for battle cruisers, and level 4 is for battleships. And level 5, if you fly those, is specifically for fleets, or for capital ships. Um, now, if you like to do dead combat sites, uh, those are rated on a 1 to 10 scale, and that's a little bit more granular. In that case, it's 1 is frigate, 2 is destroyer, 3 is cruiser, uh, so up to 5, and then you get into, into the fleet options. Um, dead sites and missions may have acceleration gates that uh, limits the kinds of ships that can actually be on grid, uh, can actually join. So there may be situations where someone's bringing a battle cruiser along and they can't actually enter in to the to the uh, to the L2 or the L, uh, to the L2 that uh, you're you're pulling currently. Um, uh, Calvert has in chat. Dead sites. Do you have to do you know what level it is? Uh, when you warp into a dead site, there is a mission. There is a pop up window. Uh, that comes up that tells you uh, the name of it and what it does. Um, I, I'm, I'm drawing a blank whether or not there's actually the number that shows up in that message box, but there are a couple of very good wiki pages on Unowiki and Elopedia uh, that just list very, very quickly. Uh, if it's named this, it's going to be this level. So it's it's a very trivial matter to actually pick out which one you're doing. Um, Eve Survival, I find, isn't as good a source as far as dead missions. Uh, it has a, a fair bit of holes as far as the number of missions that it covers in that way. Uh, it's really more focused on uh, agents and uh, wormhole sites. But um, Evilopedia, in particular, does have a pretty comprehensive uh, list of dead sites and, and where you'll find them. Let's hope that answers your question. Uh, let's see here. Um... Yeah, so so deciding whether or not larger ships will be an, adv- an advantage, uh, depending on if they can get through the gates, if someone else, like I say, if they're pulling an L2 or an L3, um, will that battleship be able to come? Uh, is a faction ship really better? Uh, it's more expensive. I mean, if you know how to fly a faction uh, ship at, at the same hull level, um, you know, chances are if you know how to do it, it will be better. But again, is it is it providing a, a, an advantage or is it providing more of a target for the fleet? Um, especially if you're missioning in low sec. You know, you, you really want to be aware of how much attention you're drawing to yourself. Um, because that will determine the, the kinds of people that are willing to aggress you. Uh, so playing to your group's strengths, uh, you know, slow ships uh, will be a problem. If you if you are working in mixed fleets, you're locked into the lowest warp speed if you're doing squad warps. Um, and if you're warping separately, then you're potentially opening people up to be ganked separately, especially if they're in a in a slower, uh, shiny battleship. And fast ships are really sort of the, the power that you have. Um, you don't need to worry about uh, tackle freights necessarily when you're doing when you're doing missions in high sec. Um, if you're thinking about, you know, do you want to have, um, because you're doing it as a group, do you want to have scram? Or do you want to have warp tackle fit? Uh, if, if a war target jumps into your group, and this relates to the last class as well, um, if you're if you're planning on doing missioning and hoping to bait out war targets, like you you want to have a way to tackle them. Like you you, you don't need that at all for missioning, so you're sacrificing a mid slot. But maybe you're choosing maybe you're saying, okay, let's do a shield fate, let's do a bunch of Caldera ships so we can have lots of ECM and lots of um, lots of ways to tackle people. Um, and that can be actually a lot of good fun. You're essentially baiting and waiting for things to happen. 
And again, this is, this is how wormhole gangs operate. So this kind of this kind of philosophy will translate well if you want to join the wormhole campus and start doing things there, because you're always hoping, you know, that there will be the chance for a fight as well while you're trying to make your exit. And being aware of the group's weaknesses. Um, as the fleet boss, you are able to uh, see the composition of your ship. You're able to see sort of what uh, leadership skills people have, whether or not they're able to pass boosts properly. Uh, because you only have 10 people in your fleet when you're doing a mission in order to share the rewards properly, um, you're only concerned about single squad. So as long as one of you has leadership five, um, you don't have to be the, you can, you can be the boss and not the squad leader. So just as long as someone has leadership uh, five and is able to pass it to everyone in the squad, that's the important thing. Uh, being able to call your targets when necessary. We talked about tagging versus broadcasting. Um, and again, sort of filling, filling the weakness, weaknesses of, the thing, of, of your composition. So does someone have a really slow uh, sensor lock uh, scan, scan resolution? So is, is there a way for, if you have a logi frigate or something, can they do remote, um, uh, a remote link in order to improve uh, how your battleship is able to either do tracking or able to do uh, target locking? Uh, because the faster they can do that, the faster they can apply damage. So you're trying to boost the weaknesses of the composition that you have, and even two battleships, like they can, they can remote uh, boost each other. Um, and depending on the composition, uh, battleships can remote rip each other. Like you can set up a Dominic fleet of two or three uh, in order to what they, they call spider dogs. So you've got these three Dominixes that are all sort of working together and launching the drones. And they're basically tinker fit to transfer cap to each other, repair each other, boost each other. Um, and it's really, really effective, especially in, in low sec and null sec, I'm sure. Uh, null alliances do these kinds of things quite a bit. It's where some fits I have are from. Uh, so, so being able to sort of share those boosts and not being so dependent on uh, local uh, modules that are only affecting you and they're affecting you to a lesser degree than the remote modules are designed to do. Because, of course, the game is designed to work better when multiple people are playing and things are being applied remotely. As you have different ships, for example, if you're flying a big slow drone boat and you have, you know, fast active, uh, uh, say, like a Tech 3 cruiser or a heavy assault cruiser um, or anything that's basically able to fly around, you can do drone assists. So they can be fighting with a swarm of 15, 20 drones uh, flying around them. Uh, all applying damage to their targets. So again, that's another very quick way to rip through uh, certain missions, and again, you'll see that used constantly in the incursion medium. Uh, because being able to assist your drones to another player uh, transfers the control of the drone to them, to what they're addressing. Uh, so it allows much more concentrated fire and drones just, you know, 20, 20 hobgoblins can eat through pretty much anything um, uh, fairly quickly. Uh, combined with uh, any other aggression uh, uh, weapons that are on the field uh, going after them. So it's a great way to especially take down uh, smaller ships if you're in a faster ship, is to uh, concentrate drones on one ship that can take out all the frigates, uh, especially elite frigates, because they'll be trying to attack the drones as well. So it's a good way to get those off the field as quickly as possible. And there may be situations where you're just uh, working in just a pair, like say you have you know, two fairly slow missile boats, and uh, you're you're having trouble dealing enough damage to do things. So again, like when when to work together, when to align to a station, when to decide to get out. Because if you're warping away and your other friend doesn't realize you're gone, they're now taking the entire aggro of the room, and that may cause them to lose their ship, um, or at least their drones, or whatever the case may be. So that's a that's a definite risk um, in terms of what they can do. And how effective they can be. So make sure that you know, you're, you're calling, you're on mumble, or you're at least in fleet chat so that you're able to communicate with them to say, okay, well, I'm getting ready to warp out here. And, uh, you know, maybe there's a, there's a, there's a rat that does scrambling and they haven't had time to tell you and you've warped off and there's just nothing they can do. So, uh, and you won't have time to warp back and go through the acceleration gates and all that. So being able to communicate that way will save a lot of hard feelings and save a lot of, uh, potential lost ships. And if you're doing this on your uh, uni main, then there's under a war deck. Um, you know, both of you can uh, can also be be mindful of local, uh, able to sort of watch for 
war targets who are logging in, uh, watch for potential when you have uh, site robbers uh, that are coming in to scavenge your stuff or use your wrecks um, to shoot at your MTUs, that kind of thing. And maybe a friend decides to you know, shoot somebody who's gone flashy and done and uh, attacked your MTU, uh, your mobile tracking unit. And now they're flashy, and then all their friends work in. And you have the decision to say, okay, well, <laughs> I can either try and fight him or I can lose my ship. Um, so again, just, just making sure that someone else isn't making necessarily brash decisions and, uh, try to have someone that's, that's in control of the fit, uh, and deciding, uh, what, what to do. Because, you know, a lot of people will just sort of react, uh, if they, if they see something they think they can shoot, they'll just do it without, uh, necessarily thinking through all the consequences. Uh, and that just comes with experience. Uh, but maybe, you know, maybe you, you have an idea to, to bake people out as well. So it's it, it's fun, and, and in case of uh, unexpected PvP, uh, being able to do missions in a group does open up other opportunities. And again, much more so in in uh, lower security and low security space. And one last one things is, like I said, sort of meter greed. So in a lot of uh, games, you'll have sort of a dice roll system. Um, where you're essentially deciding, okay, well, in this piece of loot, you know, you can essentially say, okay, everybody's going to roll greed for it, and then random number generator decides who gets it. Uh, and you don't get that. You have to decide, okay, who's going to be picking up stuff, who's going to be salvaging, um, who gets what, uh, whose job as it is. You know, it's, 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 it's not easy uh, to take care of all this stuff. You know, you can throw salvage drones in the room, have as a dedicated salvager, uh, but you still need to decide who does the work, who does the selling, who turns it into profits. Um, you know, if you're pulling a mission, uh, who gets the, the overseer? Uh, who gets the valuable stuff at the end? Um, if you happen to be doing epic arcs um, and someone isn't able to pull the mission and they're helping you all the way through and there's not two copies of the book, and there's not two copies of the blueprint at the end of the mission, you know, it's just one. You know, who gets it? What did they grab it before you do? Like, all of these things are, are, are a little bit unique to Eve um, compared to other ones where you have a nice handy random number generator saying, okay, well, this person got the highest number, so they get it. So you, you can think about it as, you know, everything is, is neat based on who actually gets there first, who opens the can, who grabs it. Um, as far as loot, that's actually on grid. And then everything else relates to what the agent will give you. So in-station rewards, um, uh, and the fact that there is a limit of 10 people per fleet who can actually share rewards, you know, is everyone doing that? Have you agreed that everyone shares the standing, shares the ISK, shares the, the LP? Um, making sure that that's agreed upon in advance is very important. Um, maybe someone realizes, oh, I don't, I don't want standings. That will screw me up. Um, and you need to be able to communicate that with people. Um, and if you're doing locust fleets, everybody should be on grid. Everybody should be, you know, shooting the same red crosses. Uh, they're probably getting bounty payments as well. They're able to see that the progress is happening. Um, if you're doing spider fleets, it's a little different. You sort of have to rely on uh, your own in-game logs for your changes, uh, for your wallets if someone is sharing awards, um, LP journal, that kind of thing. And most spider fleets will have like a uh, a little thing in chat that there that shows what, what mission they've completed, what level it was, so you can sort of get an idea how people are progressing, how people are uh, are gaining rewards at what rate, and if anybody's sort of fallen behind or if they've gone AFK and they're basically just mooching off the fleet. Um, so that's another way to consider uh, how whether or not you're doing spider versus locust is is uh, is who you're actually doing it with. Uh, I would say, as a rule, I tend to prefer prefer spider fleets. Uh, certainly, when I'm doing it with my alts, um, sometimes I'll I'll benefit from, like for example, one of my alts has a as a lower standing the Sisters of Eve than my main. So my main is pulling a level four missions, and I'm sharing the rewards with my alts. I can I can do whatever I want with the ISK, um, but I can't control the LP. So I now have a split pool of LP. Uh, that's basically spent at the LP stores for unique rewards. And, uh, but the main thing I want is I want to boost my alts corp standings. So being able to fleet up with yourself, with your alts, in order to boost their standings slower, but still automatically, um, is a real bonus if you're trying to, uh, to get things up fairly quickly. 
And it's those exact same reasons why you want to help newer players sometimes. Uh, if they can only pull level one or level two missions, and you're able to do level four, it doesn't matter so much that they're that they're not contributing as much with their rewards as you are, um, because they're getting to a point where they'll be able to pull higher missions faster. Um, maybe they'll want to keep, keep missioning with you, and then that'll that'll return a dividend to you later. It'll probably return a dividend to whoever they want to mission with on, on their own time. Um, so again, there's there's more advantages to group activities. Uh, for how the rewards can be shared than purely like what shows up in your wallets immediately. Uh, and then finally deciding um, based on the level of mission you're at, um, do you actually want to salvage uh, versus running more missions? So again, if you're in a small group of two or three people, none of you really want to waste fitting a salvager or you don't have the right kind of ships to use salvage drones. So, you know, do you decide, okay, well, we just ran an L3, we can potentially run another L3 or an L4. Um, do we want to salvage that last mission? And you can decide. You can say, well, there was there was only like 12 ships on grid, so it's probably not worth it. We can make more risk uh, by shooting all the new stuff. Um, oh, we pulled blockade. Let's go do that right away. Um, so that'll, that'll depend on, on the progress, depend on the missions that you pull next. So you might want to basically just abandon all the wrecks on grid uh, in favor of pulling a new mission. All right, so at this point I've finished up the, uh, the main points in the gang missioning syllabus. I'm going to be talking a bit more about uh, epic arcs right away. I uh, just need to take a quick break for, for questions and some water. Uh, so if you have any questions regarding spidering, locusting, um, how to manage uh, group TV activities, feel free to type those in. I'll watch Mumble and lecture not All right, question from Enzella. Uh, would you recommend smaller ships for locust fleets in lower or in lower null sec, or go with what people come in and live with the consequences? Uh, well, primarily that will depend on the types of missions that you're pulling. Uh, if you're pulling level five missions in low sec, then you know you'll you'll definitely want to have a few uh, a few battleships for sure, um, just to be able to cope with the the amount of DD that will be on the field. Um, I would say that if you're if you're trying to do uh, and let's let's back up for a second and say, okay, why would you want to do normal missions in low sec? Uh, well, the main reason is that the lower the true security system, the true, the true security of a system, uh, potentially the the higher the reward, the higher the the modifier is for an agent. So you, if you're running uh, missions in a zero point one security, uh, you will actually be getting more rewards, more risk, more LP from that agent than you would say if you were running it in zero point seven. Uh, so there is a modifier relating to that uh, as far as why you would want to. Um, is it worth the potential risk that you get? Well, again, if you're, if you're trying to be a bait fleet, if you're trying to you know, get a fight or stumble across other people who are exploring, perhaps, um, you know, there, there's a lot of good reasons why you might want to roam and do missions to kill time and earn money while you're looking for fights. Um, so in, in that sense, if you're, if you're deciding to do, like, say, you know, a bunch of cruisers doing low sec L2s, you'll be getting a decent, a decent amount of reward. Um, and you'll also have opportunities to track people down. Um, probably people who want to do that regularly are probably in another corp and doing faction warfare because it's kind of the same process and faction warfare missions are also, uh, you know, are, are, are generated in these kinds of ways. So anyone who seriously wants to do that is probably getting into faction warfare, but um, you know it, it is it, you do have the choice as well. Um, I would say the only reason I would want to do uh, low sec is to do L fours for extra rewards, and again to do it in a gang environment with the potential for PvP. And when you get into L fives, uh, that's just you know a much bigger challenge, and you're hoping to pull together a much bigger fleet. Um, you know, same thing with uh, low sec incursions. Like most communities don't run incursions in low sec, but they have to if they want the particular rewards like the revenant drops, uh, revenant uh, super carrier drops. So again, it's 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 risk reward, and you have to do a lot of planning and make a lot of decisions about how you want to fit your ships, and basically plan plan for it to be a PvP fleet, um, even though you're running missions. And again, this is this is how uh, how wormhole. Uh, dwellers tend to tend to plan out their things. 
Uh, question from Pink. What are Federation Navy Midshipman insignia used for for missions? Let's open that up. All right, so this is an Empire insignia drop. Uh, the particular one that he linked is for Federation Navy. Uh, these will exist for all of the factions, the four factions, um, the Empire factions, rather. Uh, so essentially what these are are dog tags from pilots. Um, so from a lore point of view, you've killed a pilot that flies for a Navy. Um, you've looted their wreck, and there's no corpse, of course, but there are these dog tags. So these are essentially records that you've killed Navy pilots. So it's a very good, uh, it's a very good, uh, thing to keep in mind that if you're getting these, you're also losing security status. Whatever you shot, they don't like you anymore. Um, sorry, not security status, faction standing. So because you've been, uh, you've been shooting a member of the Navy, uh, that faction likes you less. So this is why you need to choose when you accept a mission, do you want to accept it? Do you want to be shooting this faction and reduce your standings with them? Uh, so what do you do with them? Well, you can sell them on the market, uh, or you can take them in, into LP stores. Uh, they're essentially part of uh, item exchange contracts uh, for LP stores. Um, and the description says such of these may prove valuable if handed into the proper organization. Um, so basically you recover these, and you hand them back in, and they're basically part of the ingredients list to get certain other items. Uh, let me see if I can find an example. Uh, there are also Cosmos missions and data centers that are related. Um, I'm not sure if they use all the same tags, though. I think those may use a different kind. Okay, so in chat I've linked a Federation Navy 10 Mega Newton Afterburner Blueprint. Um, in order to purchase this blueprint, uh, which won't exist anywhere other than an LP store, or potentially on contracts, I have to hand in 95 Caldari Navy. Uh, let's see, Commodore? Yeah, so I have to hand in. So I have to hand in almost 250 dog tags of these uh, combined, of uh, at the Commodore level, in order to get that and spend 36,000 LP and spend 14 million ISK. Um, so essentially, this is saying that in order to get a Galente item, I have to prove that I've killed a lot of Caldari officers. So again, this is why. A lot of people purchase faction stuff from the market rather than getting it themselves. It's because you effectively have to destroy your standings with one navy in order to get the rewards from a different navy. So hopefully that's a thorough answer to the question. All right, and we are now down to about 10 minutes before the next uh, class is scheduled to start. Uh, it should be a intro to the NELSEC campus. Uh, Far will be doing it. Um, probably right on... Well, Basically, as this class ends, um, we'll, we'll be staying in this classroom, but um, uh, we might... I'm not sure, even sure if he's using the lecture. Uh, basically, if, if you want to go off and do the NSC thing, feel free. Um, anyone who remains, if you have any other questions, uh, we'll also be able to form up a missioning fleet after that. I'll just mention that now. Um, so feel free to do whatever you like. And I just have a little bit more to talk about for Epic Arc missions, and then we'll be all done. Okay, I've got links in the mumble and lecture.e-uni uh, for a wiki page. Oh, we moved it. Okay. Okay, okay. So, yeah, Fargo, Fargo moved, his, uh, moved his schedule. He said he was busy, so didn't realize he had actually changed the calendar point. Okay. All right, so no rush then. Uh, all right, so I've just uh, dropped a link uh, to the Epic Arc Missions uh, section of our missions page. So if you're able to open up our uh, our wiki page there, uh, there are seven types of Epic Arc Missions. Most people here are probably familiar with the Bloodstained Stars. Uh, that is essentially the level one or even level zero uh, Epic Arc that most people are familiar with. Um, it's definitely a common piece of advice to do that as soon as you're done the career tutorial missions. Um, even before you join the uni, because you have to travel a lot in the uni, and if we're under war deck, it's pretty risky. Um, but uh, Epic Arc missions are sort of the, the higher end um, story contents uh, as far as the uh, as far as the game goes. Um, incursions are kind of the end game dungeon raids, but Epic Arcs are sort of the high level uh, lore and story um, things that you can do in the game, and uh, they're basically built around. Uh, having a having a terrific boost in standings, 
uh, primarily, because that's one of the main, uh, main rewards you can get with factions. And then also sort of unique rewards. So, for example, as you do Sisters of Eve, you get this huge boost to any stand, any any uh, empire that you want, um, without any uh, detrimental uh, standing with uh, their their enemies. So that's the main reason people like to run uh, Sisters of Eve. Um, all of the Epic Arc missions are time gated. Uh, oh, sorry, I see just a question in the chat there. How long does that class last? Uh, he's asking about the Null Site Campus, I think. Um, oh, he's on mobile, so I won't answer. Anyone can uh, answer the ch- answer the question in chat if you like. All right, so back to where I was. Uh, the Epic Arc missions are time locked to you can only run them on every character once every three months, and because of that, uh, you sort of have to set a uh, sort of a, a reminder for yourself uh, as to when you can do it. Um, you can also go to talk to the agents and check uh, if they're willing to uh, grant you the mission again. Um, if you've already completed uh, Bloodstained Stars, for example, um, you'll pre- be presented the option if you speak to the starting agent again of, you know, do you actually want to reset? Do you want to reset to zero and start this over? Um, that essentially just lets you restart the mission and get all the same rewards as you did before. Uh, so you can do that once every three months, and you can do that with all seven of the arcs. And uh, the advantage there is that you can essentially farm uh, those rewards. So for Bloodstained Stars, you can get that, you know, nice juicy 8%, uh, I think it's more than 8% actually, uh, boost uh, to whatever faction you like, um, which is incredibly valuable, especially if you've been shooting a lot of uh, Navy pilots and you want to recover your standings a fair bit. Um, and it's uh, very good if you want to boost your ability to run the other Epic Arcs. Uh, and so I asked all seven, so four Empires and three Pirates. Um, yes, uh, it's it, until the Sisters of Eve ships were introduced, people didn't really like to think of the Sisters of Eve as a pirate faction. Um, but essentially, the, essentially that's that's what they are. They are essentially a, a hybrid faction. Um, so you, you you could call you could say there are three pirate arcs if you really wanted to. But I think people sort of set Sisters of Eve aside because it is sort of the uh, like I say almost level zero. It's 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 so easy to complete and it's it's so focused on new players. But uh, but yes, there are there are four empires and and two pirates and the sisters of Eve, however you want to call them. <laughs> so uh, the distinction between the pirates uh, the pirates and the the empire arcs is that the empire ones are uh, structured to be level four missions. Um, in terms of you need uh, level four standings with the agents in order to begin the chain. And level four standings equates to five uh, uh, faction standings with uh, either the Empire uh, or the starting corporation. And uh, the, the agents do a nice job of actually telling you whether or not uh, they're willing to speak to you even before you travel with them. Um, you can actually link the name of the agents and uh, start a conversation with them, and they'll tell you if it's worth your time to come visit them, which is nice. And uh, the two uh, pirate arcs in it that are located, uh, which... Um, that are, they're located in null sec. Uh, that's the distinction. The empire arcs are predominantly in high sec. They certainly start in high sec. They may they may dump off into low as the as the missions branch, but primarily they're they're focused within the empire space. Uh, but the pirate arcs, on the other hand, are definitely uh, null sec focused. Uh, you can start them in high sec, and you do a fair bit of traveling to get there. But uh, all, all the main chains are in, in null sec areas. And because they're an NPC null sec, uh, they're fair game for your nieces to go into and run the missions. Uh, but they're also a fair bit risky. Uh, Calvary asked the question, how does Mordu's Legion fit in? Uh, the answer to that is they don't fit in yet. Uh, Mordu's Legion is mainly a combat um, and exploration focused uh, rewards at this point. Um, if CCP devotes some developer time into creating more missions. I'm I'm absolutely certain that more news would be the next epic arc. I think people would be really interested in having another uh, set of uh, pirate arcs. But unfortunately, more news has exactly one station uh, with agents in it, um, and it is basically locked right into uh, I think what's currently Goon owned territory. So very much like the uh, the Sisters Vive. Uh, parent corporation uh, sanctuary 
which is basically sort of locked in around the same area, um, it's incredibly difficult for people to do missions for that. Um, and you can see that, you know, CCP expanded the number of places that sisters could be run. So if they do decide to introduce more dues, I think they have to seriously consider um, expanding uh, where those particular bases are. So because there are a whole lot of uh, debates and discussion going on into what to do with NPC NLSEC, how to expand that, how to spread things around, um, I'm thinking that they'll probably uh, set the uh, the Epic Arc stuff on the back burner until that gets sorted out. But it's an excellent question, and I would I would I would bet ask that they will be the next Epic Arc to be added, because it's just nice to have the pirate ships tied to uh, this kind of story progression as well. All right, uh, so wrapping up the uh, talk of Epic Arcs here, um, <clears throat> one of the Sorry, sorry, having my mic queued up for that. Um, one of the issues with uh, doing the epic arcs is that you know how do you how do you decide to fit your ships? You know how do you how do you cope with uh, flying in NPC NPC nullsec, especially to do the pirate ones? And the answer is that they're structured a little differently. Uh, when you actually speak to those agents, uh, they tell you right up front, um, you know, you should probably take an interceptor. Uh, you should probably take a really small ship to actually do this. And that's a little bit misleading, but it gives you a clue that, you know, even though this is technically a level three, you do not want to be flying a battle cruiser through NullSec. You know, they do, they do not want to see a lot of people losing those ships, uh, to take care of those. And in fact, when you start flying them, um, you'll realize that, okay, some of these acceleration gates have a limit on ship size. So, okay, why is this different? And the answer is that it's designed for advanced, uh, advanced frigates and destroyer classes. So, for example, if you have an assault freight, uh, you're in perfect shape to run the pirate arcs, which is a little bit unusual. Yeah, just like Enzel says, like it's it's basically one of the best ways to do it. Um, it is a little slower, but the enemies that you're fighting are actually fairly well balanced uh, to cope with uh, smaller Tech 2 ships. Um, tech 1 ship probably having a fair bit of a problem because, again, you have different resist profiles in Tech 2s, so you're Taking a great deal less damage, um, especially if you're say going against the angels in uh, in Amar, um, you have boosts that are designed for that. So you're you're greatly increasing your survivability, um, and uh, also because you're in Elsec, you want to have fairly fast and maneuverable ships, um, particularly in Curse, where the, the angel epic arc mission is. Um, there's there's a lot of activity there. There's a lot of chances that uh, the gates will be bubbled. So it's it's definitely a risk. Um, mainly I've done the, uh, the Kaldari, uh, the Garistas, uh, the Smash and Grab Arc. And that is actually a very quiet, uh, piece, uh, section of space. It's, uh, very unlikely that, uh, depending on the time zone, of course, but there's, there's a lot less activity. So it's actually a fairly good starter, uh, starter experience. Um, it has slightly less rewards, but it is pretty nice to get a Gila blueprint at the end. And there's, uh, if you finish reading through the page, there's quite a, quite a bit of uh, information on the wiki. Um, the wiki could be a lot stronger in terms of epic arcs. Um, unfortunately, there's a lot of information that was created back when, you know, the game was very young. Epic arcs have been around for a really long time. Um, so a lot of the information that we have, uh, if you just Google it, you'll, you'll, you'll find a lot of outdated information. Uh, we have that problem as well. Um, for example, if you see a guide that says you need 4.35 standings, like, that's just flat out wrong. <laughs> and it's like I try not to perpetuate that kind of information being wrong. So it's definitely a goal of mine uh, to get the, uh, the wiki on the Epic Arc set up a bit better, uh, a bit more accurate. Um, and it's just because it's, it's been around for so long, nobody has really looked at it uh, much very recently. Uh, Calvary asked a question, so most production blueprints are only available through PDE? Um, no, not specifically, but for things like, um, uh, for things like faction blueprints, so pirate faction, navy faction, um, LP stores are the source of, uh, navy faction items. If you run missions for the Garistas, uh, in their space, then you'll build up LP for them, you'll be able to buy, um, uh, what are the Garistas ones called? I should remember, but I don't. Um, can someone dig up uh, some Garista's ammo and link it in the chat? It's domination, I think it is, if I'm right about that. 
Uh, so again, like if you want to obtain pirate items, you have to you have to work for pirates basically, um, because looting looting from them takes an incredibly long time. So if you want any significant uh, amount of stuff, especially like higher meta items, um, you do need to actually do missions for them, just like you do for the navies. All right, so so all this leads into what is now time for my announcement. Um, oh, one more question before I do that. Uh, Iconoclastics asks, so can you get a Nestor blueprint from the uh, Sisters of Ebark? Uh, no, you can't from the Ark. Uh, the Ark rewards are specific and locked in. Um, but if you wanted to do a whole bunch of missions, a whole bunch of LP for Sisters, this is also a good point. The, uh, the, the rewards that you get for doing an Epic Ark are different from those you get from running mission agents. Uh, that's, that's a very important distinction. That's why different agents exist and they're identified as Epic Arc agents. Uh, so that's an important distinction. You don't get LP uh, for running those agents. You get a specific, uh, reliable set of rewards that is time-locked. Again, you can't do it after until after another three months. So if you, no matter how many times you run the Sisters of Evark, you're not going to improve uh, your LP amounts. Um, you, you'll improve your standings with Sister Elatoria, and you'll improve standings with other agents. Uh, for different corporations, but it's not going to help you buy any sister ships, unfortunately. Yeah, it's it's just that epic arcs don't actually give you the same LP rewards as running missions do. Um, so it's 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 a different mechanic and it's different agents that you're talking to. So again, we're we're back to like how do we how do we do these other empire arcs? How do we do these pirate arcs? And typically, what I've noticed in my in my over a year in the uni is that you know there are a handful of people that are really interested in sort of doing this stuff. Um, and it's just pretty irregular, and you, you have to do a fair bit of groundwork to find out, okay, how do we get out into Nullsec this time? Like, how do we get our ships there? Do we have connections? Do we have wormholes? Do we have bridging? Um, and it's just been, like, it's it's so irregular, it's very difficult to do something that you can potentially grind every three months. Uh, so I really want to change that. Uh, so I'm going to be announcing um, what is, I'm, I'm sort of loosely calling an Epic Art Guild, uh, so basically just a way for mission runners to regularly uh, start doing epic arcs sort of on a time scale. Um, what I'm going to be doing is setting up so that it's uh, an opportunity to have fleets like every couple of weeks. And then theoretically, if you have the standings to do an epic arc every two weeks, your timer is up after you've done seven of them. So basically every 14 weeks or so, you can just start again. And that'll just be kind of a a come as you are, drop in, drop out. Uh, but what will make it special, as far as the uni is concerned, is that we'll be offering a bit of support um, through the events department about actually getting ships and getting your loot in and out of Nullsec. Um, so for, well, previously, that had to be like a... You ha- you'd either have to uh, pay a hauling service to get your stuff in, get your stuff out, if you had concerns about getting there yourself, um, if you had concerns about getting your loot out. And we want to make that a little bit easier. Um, so we'll be offering ways to uh, more securely and at a lower cost uh, actually get your, your loot out after you run it. And uh, I'm going to be setting up some advanced ships uh, on contract and just have a little uh, have a little set of resources for Unistas who want to run those arcs uh, out in NullSec and in the major uh, HiSec group hubs. Uh, so I'll be putting up a post about that uh, probably over this weekend. Uh, I've got a lot of other uh, mails and things to take care of today, but it's definitely going to be in out soon, and we'll be running it uh, probably fairly soon. I'll probably set it to be a weeknight. Um, that seems to be sort of the best way to um, doing other things. A uh, separate question from Iconoclastics in chat. Can you be part of more than one campus? Yes, you can be part of as many campuses as you actually uh, want to spend time with. So related to campuses, I'm going to be setting the uh, the high set group as the uh, sort of the home base uh, for this. It made sense to set up a, a PD program base there. Um, you don't have to be a part of it, but if you want some extra resources, um, what I'm thinking is that for the most part, people who are uh, worried about logistics and getting things hauled to and from uh, NullSec or any of the other areas, uh, Amazon will be sort of the main uh, hub for logistics for that. Um, so if you wanted to move some of your uh, potential missioning ships there, uh, that would be a good place for actually getting them to and fro 
uh, other things. So just for the sake of having a hub, that will be where it is. All right, so that is the majority of stuff uh, as far as the list goes, and certainly the end of the gang missioning syllabus. Um, so if anyone has any more questions on Epic Arcs or the mission running stuff, I don't want to keep people too much longer. And for anyone who would like to start doing some uh, high sec missioning, uh, we can certainly set up a fleet for that. Uh, we can all stay in this uh, public chat if you like, or we can... I don't think we need to move to uh, the public moment, but uh, for the sake of forming a fleet, we can definitely uh, get some people set up here. So I'm going to scroll back into the lecture chat and see who X up earlier. Thank you very well. All right, so we had uh, three other people uh, previously who were interested in uh, doing a mission fleet. Um, so I have Pink, I have Serendipity, and Calric. Is there anyone else who would like to do a little bit of, um, uh, not necessarily, it doesn't have to be an L4, but if you'd like to be like, part of an L4 fleet, we can absolutely do that and do a Locust. So ship requirements. Uh, we don't uh, have any ship requirements as long as you have a sufficient tank. Uh, for example, if you have a uh, cruiser or a battle cruiser, uh, you'll probably be safe enough um, coming onto an L4. Uh, but if you prefer to do your own, um, something else, if you prefer to do an L2, and you can only fly a cruiser, then you, know, you certainly have that option as well. But the advantage of doing, like say, an L4 in a group is uh, that you're you're spreading around um, the aggro, and you're taking care of the higher damage ships first. So if you do end up taking a bit more damage, you can fairly safely warp off. And, uh, and just come back afterward and then the yeah, road should to my men. Uh, question about, uh, how much effective hit points for an L4? Um, battleship, let's see, your battleship you're looking at probably wants a minimum of, uh, if you're in a battle cruiser you'd want a minimum of about 40,000. Um, battleship you're sort of looking at upwards of 75,000. You can, you can tank it quite a bit differently. Um, but uh, as long as you're around 75,000, that's usually uh, pretty good. Um, certainly enough for, for a dual boxer. And as you get closer to 100,000, it just becomes much easier to solo. So uh, we'll, have, we'll have a fair bit of room to play around. Uh, because we're still in the moderated chat, I'm just going to move to uh, the free-for-all chat uh, in Classroom 1. And, uh, and, and just to confirm, anyone who is currently... Um, who's currently not in the uni and would still like to come along with this, uh, you're welcome to. This is a public class and we're offering a public lead here. So we'll, we'll definitely stay on the public server and I'll just move to uh, Classroom 1 here and then everyone can uh, have the chance to chat. And I think you can stop recording and appreciate any time you uh, get the chance to post the class.